be the biggest thing is we're going bankrupt. The struggles with Edmonton downtown farmers market. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's. I mean. That's the. The struggle is this building because the windows haven't been upgraded and uh, that's I think a big part of it. It is multiple floors, it's an old building, so the operation, the infrastructure costs, all that kind of thing are outstanding. So yeah, our winter bills are, I think it's almost 20,000 for just utilities. This is a beautiful big building, but it needs a lot of love. Um, it's, we can't sustain the cost of this building. There's four floors here. So we need to think in the best interest of these vendors. We can't keep pushing these costs onto these vendors. I think one of the most important things for people to understand about the downtown market is that the market is serving the people who are downtown. And so our market has been the heart of our city through all of this time of Edmonton's growth, including through the recent pandemic, which has been really hard on our city. It's been really hard on our downtown. And of course, it's been hard on our, our downtown market. If we don't have enough customers for the vendors, then we don't, we don't have them and we can't make the money to you know, get the events going and to bring in the customers. Yeah, so it's this big cycle. It was uh, hard on all the markets, but a lot of markets bounced back a little easier than downtown. Another struggle is the location being downtown. So downtown struggled a lot from COVID, uh, post-COVID, you know, with the encampments and such like that. And so people are very afraid to come downtown. That's what a lot of things we've heard on social media is the biggest thing. And that we hear on the street sort of thing, people talking. Hi, I'm Corrine Olson, and I'm the executive director with the Edmonton Downtown Farmers Market. Sure, so my name is Jodine Chase and I am the chair of the board of the Edmonton Downtown Farmers Market Association. I'm also a vendor here, so my family operates the coffee uh, kiosk and roastery. <laughs> we came for coffee, but we also came for you, so I'll go order coffee and we'll come right back. My name's Elaine Doucette. I'm the market manager here at the Edmonton Downtown Farmers Market. My specialization though is marketing and communications. So these are the artists. We actually have uh, two different collectives down on the main floor. There's one upstairs, one's a sculptors association. This is the uh, artists at the market. There's four of them in the collective. So they share these two booths to cover costs because you know, starving artists and all. And they actually are leaving at the end of the year, unfortunately, but this is their season. It's Christmas, it's gift giving, they have cards, they have prints, they have all sorts of gifts to give. We have four of us and we all have slightly different items. So we have, I do textile art, so I paint and sew. And then Perry does a lot of beautiful little whimsical animals. And Hung does a lot of landscapes and um, landmarks of Edmonton especially. She has a really nice calendar which has landmarks of Edmonton. And then Karen does very flowy landscapes and a lot of mountainscapes. And that. There are so many markets now that maybe it dilutes who goes to the markets because people will only go to so many markets. During COVID people were very supportive of arts. They said, support your artists, support your entertainers because they can't get out and sell as much stuff. But now that's sort of fallen off, I think, a bit. And then there's so many markets as well. So I think people are a bit worried about the economy right yes. now. And they're worried about that, you know, their utilities bills are going up or their um, gasoline is going up. So all those kind of things. But one good thing about when you buy local is that of course the money stays here. So I mean, you know, we're buying groceries and we're paying our utility bills. So that's good. downtown farmers markets an integral part of the history of the city so when you think about our markets 120 years old um, when we were when we started we've always been downtown but when we started Edmonton was downtown like that was the, the whole of the city is what we now think of as being downtown so 
we've always served the downtown core um, and we've grown along with the downtown and we've shifted and changed with the downtown. You know, from the original days when uh, farmers brought their goods in uh, with horse-drawn carriage uh, to now we have some people who come on the LRT to the, to the market. 1903 is when it first started and actually, which I find this fact amazing, is that the market started before Edmonton was incorporated. So that's, uh, you know, 120 years of farmer's market and it's still registered under the same nonprofit it started in 1903, which is so cool. And it's shuffled all around the city. Actually, it started on 97th Street and now we're on 97th Street again, but we are moving back to 104th. And I think 104th Street was our glory days. That was when we had 250 vendors and, you know, 10,000 customers walking through. It was such a bustly, popular, awesome market. And it's funny because a lot of people are so excited to get back to especially vendors. They're thousand dollar days and you know like really having the impact. But it hasn't always been like that. You know our market has been pushed out of the downtown. Middle of last century Edmonton was revisioning its downtown and it, the, the market wasn't in that vision. We put a brand new library which is a really important amenity but we replaced the market when we put in that library and we've kind of been drifting and somewhat homeless ever since, including being out on, on the street and having the street only for a while. So when we started in the downtown core before any of us were born and people were living downtown and they were walking to the market and farmers came in, they drove their, their team of horses in with their produce. Um, and then the automobile really changed our city and it changed cities all over North America. And we see markets all around the city now on arterial roadways. There's a uniqueness to a farmer's market that isn't in place anywhere else. It exists exactly to support local. That's why we're here. You know you can come to a farmer's market and you can have a table and you can sell what you grow and you can meet customers and they will come every week and they will tell you how much they liked the peas you grew and they will tell you that the kind of carrot that you grew is exactly the kind that they remember tasting in their grandmother's garden. Those are the kinds of things that happen in farmer's markets that are unique to farmer's markets. The price of groceries increasing because of the follow-on impacts, both from the pandemic, but also the increase in uh, you know, uh, extreme weather events because of climate change, where we've had a lot of disruptions in the supply chain have really underscored this. I mean, people have been talking about this, but when you actually see it, when you go into your grocery store and suddenly, um, you know, there's no milk because the highway is closed between us and the favorite Fraser Valley, where a lot of our milk comes from, that's when you realize, oh gosh, the milk is still there at my local farmer's market. And the milk is still there because it only came a few miles by truck. You're not having to see that carrot sit on that truck for, for two weeks while the truck brings it in across the border. disruption that is happening to supply chains is impacting us less and the costs that are costing like our grocery stores are having to pass on these costs to customers well when fuel costs are really high and your produce is coming to you from across an ocean and across a continent that adds up here we now have a market that's in a city that's served by these LRT lines and buses from around the city and we put in a bike network and we get so many people who come to the market who are walking or taking transit who are biking and I actually think that's a really important piece of our, of our downtown market going forward is getting past that automobile driven way of coming to markets and having people be supported to come to a market in a more sustainable way. Now it's, we have to educate folks to understand where their food comes from. Why does this carrot taste different being grown out by Camrose compared to the bag carrots you get at Walmart? So you're getting less preservatives, you're getting less shipped imported items. Um, I'd have to say a lot of 
Farmers market shoppers are a little more conscious. They, they want to bring their bags. They want to they bring their stroller. They think about things. They bring their cup to the coffee shop. I know people's wallets too. They're they're thinking of their budgets. What is my budget for food this month? When you take a look at what you can get locally, it lasts longer in your crisper. market on 104th Street, its new location, is within that what they call, you know, transit-oriented uh, development zone of 400 meters from three different LRT stations and a whole bunch of bus stops, right? And that's really important. It's important for accessibility. I mean, when I was young, living in the downtown with my family, we took the bus to the farmer's market. I didn't drive to the farmer's market. And I think that families now that can take the LRT or can, you know, bike together in a protected bike lane to come to the market. I just think that's so important. And that for me is one of the reasons why I'm really excited about our new location. And so they want to be outdoors as much as possible. And even just with our garage doors open <laughs> downstairs, it wasn't enough. They want to walk, they want their dogs. That's the biggest thing. So I'm excited, honestly, about being outside, seeing dogs <laughs> everywhere and seeing families come because they're with their dog and dogs are part of the family and uh, just room to expand too. And uh, being outdoors there, and, and food trucks, it creates a whole different vibe. So I'm really excited about the future of this market. I do see it becoming the same success story it was, you know, pre-2018 when they moved. It's enough of the he's, them and us. I would like to see everybody work together so that we can grow a stronger farmer's market community. Um, it would benefit us all, working with the city, working with the different stakeholders. We'd be stronger. Um, my desire to do that, it's just been my passion to see. It's, I'm looking to assist these, these small businesses in growing. Um, you get, you get more funding working together instead of apart. A stronger group, a stronger voice. And most of everybody wants us back on 104th um, and they want us to be an outdoor market during the summer. So us being indoors during the summer really inhibited because people want to get outdoors. We like to turn off the lights and it kind of hurries people up. <laughs> so I can go home maybe before four today. That'd be good. Is that okay? Okay, beautiful. All right. But we have a market certificate uh, campaign right now, and it's like, help your friends to support local with healthy habits by you know, spending your money locally. So buy a certificate for them to come and purchase money here. So buy a certificate, buy a certificate for your friend, share our posts, get on social media, like everything, spread the words. Um, become a vendor. <laughs> Small businesses are coming up and up and coming and this is the way you start. If you're wondering how to start your like passion project, start it at the, the farmer's market. We need everyone to say, this is a critical part of our downtown and we're gonna support this and we're gonna do what we can to make sure that we keep it there. But the biggest thing is to come and support and spend your money here and remember that all the food is fresh. It lasts a lot longer than it would from the, the product you're getting at the store because it's it's fresher here. It's just coming from the farm instead of off a truck. And so remember to um, yeah, shop fresh and shop local. Good tagline. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Got it? Okay, sweet. All right. Thanks, guys. So yeah, here we are at the last day. Just uh, last market day, it's super busy, which is awesome. But we are missing a lot of vendors. A lot of them pulled out early. What am I remarking about? 
how am I feeling? <laughs> yeah, definitely mixed emotions. I'm almost relieved that it's the end because we were struggling. We tried to break our lease and it wasn't allowed. And then the board just took a really good look at the financials and yeah, it's almost a relief. Cause I remember like, we're always struggling month to month. It was like, okay, we can't hire too much staff. Should we cancel the janitor? Should the staff clean the washrooms? Should, uh, you know, we need more vendors. We can't get vendors though because the customer traffic's not, not good enough sort of thing, right? So it was just so much hustle to really try to make this market work. January, February, March are the slowest seasons for farmer's market. We don't have the selection. So a lot of people don't shop here. So, but it is very sad because uh, mostly the customers, I'm gonna be honest, they're really sad to see us go. They love the free parking and that year round thing, right? And there's nothing else downtown that has that. This building is gorgeous. It's so beautiful, like the natural lights and the windows. I love marketing this, the business, the market, because uh, it's so nice to take pictures in this building. There is a lot of pride to be a part of this market. This market has a legacy that people recognize. You know, we were a really big market on the street. We're a little smaller now, but we're still the Edmonton downtown farmers market, right? And even now that our society is folding, um, another entity is going to take it onto the street and continue the legacy. So I don't know. I don't think the legacy is actually over. It's just changed, transformed. It's like Louis said, right? Change is good, and change happens. So I just have to go with it and be positive. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling really awkward these last few weeks, like these last couple of days, this last weekend. I'm actually really anxious coming into the market to find out like, is there going to be a big shift and everybody's going to be mad at me or mad at the board or mad at the market, you know, I even like mad at the city. So a lot of people are put pointing the blame at the city. It's not, the, it's so many factors, right? Yeah, that's the thing. These are all family businesses, right? So they're just trying to pull all their family together to help when it's a, it's a sudden announcement. It was sudden for everybody. I did not expect it to happen, honestly.